Welcome back to another video. Thank you for being here. This is a continuation to the two previous videos where we talked about having blocked books and it brings up a lot of conversations. And there's a lot of people in January when I started talking about my blocked books started reaching out to me and I realized that this happens quite a bit, um, but no one really talks about it. And then there's some people that have ne they've published for five, 10 years, and they've never had anything wrong with their books. So I don't want to share this information to help you, you know, feel doubtful. I want to always help you increase your faith in the future for building passive income streams. So in this video, I'm reviewing what we talked about previously about my 150 books that were blocked and what my strategy is moving forward, because these books were blocked in January and February, and I need to get ready for Christmas sales right now. So 38% of my books have been blocked and I was very apprehensive to create more, but now I feel more confident uh, with the mid journey. And there's so many of you, this is so new for you. And guess what? Me too. We're at the forefront of the gold rush. It's like, we're going to California to go chase the gold. Do you know who made the most money during the gold rush? It was the guy who sold the shovels. So let's talk about mid journey AI keyword prompt strategy. This is just a follow up video from having books continually blocked and then recognizing like, oh, there was something going on with all of my blocked books. I looked up like, oh, maybe I'm using Canva Pro. I thought I was using it for free. But then once I got into the licensing, you know, licensing made simple. <laughs> Amazon actually requires you to own copyright to say like, I made this thing or be able to say you have publishing rights. So because you can't trademark designs used with Canva and copyright licensing is not available because you have to use third party elements in pro, it just really opened the door to figure out how to create something that I could take more ownership over. Okay. So we know that getting a license is different than a copyright. Okay. And being able to use Canva, I still use it as an editor, but I'm not able to take those things and go and run to the copyright office to um, apply for registration. So I shared in previous videos after 150 books were blocked, I was I had so much grief and anxiety around it that I didn't do a lot of research. I tried to turn in all the information that I had for the books. And it just wasn't good enough. And so when I looked at the books, I saw they had pro and free elements in the covers, in the interiors. And so like I had to come up with an action plan. And so you actually can copyright prompts because those are words and that's something you type in. Okay. So we already know like AI prompt, you can apply for copyright because those are written words. That's never been debatable with the copyright laws. So now it's like, the action plan, how can I use mid journey with the prompts, right? And how do I take my ads data to be able to create new books to replace the blocked books and working with a copyright attorney. You guys know that I had an application I submitted after someone was copying those 150 books. And uh, I, I'm in the middle of that application. It's been sent off to the US uh, copyright office. So it's not like I'm just pulling things out of my hat um, I wish I had a hat with all the answers, right? So here's what didn't work is the proof that I had that KDP wanted said it wasn't sufficient and they would uphold their decision to keep the books blocked. Now, if you've ever had this happen to you, you know, that's exactly what they say. That is the scripted automated template. Like we uphold our original decision. Okay. So the sufficient proof, it didn't matter that I had bought a license from Canva Pro. I didn't have permission to copyright third party elements and Canva was not clear on that, on that terms and conditions up until April 10th, 11th of 2023. Okay. So licensing is different than copyright when you're working on a book to upload to KDP and even creative fabric, they give you commercial license and you just need to read that very carefully to make sure that you're not infringing on your KDP agreement. And part of me has thought about reaching out to KDP on this but sometimes just staying in my lane and publishing the things that are working for me and sharing that has been more beneficial than trying to work with 
a department at Amazon that uses a lot of prompted templates, okay? So here's the ways to use MidJourney, and I'm excited to share this. So I am really interested in the digital aspect, the digital asset aspect. You might be thinking like, what is a digital asset? That's like every clip art item that is Canva Pro or in Creative Fabrica, where you're like, I can't draw a sweet little pig or a sweet little rabbit. Like now let's create our digital assets and use them in a bigger picture for our work. So this really comes down to understanding the way that you use prompts and sometimes it can be very simplified. So the important thing to remember is reading the terms and conditions of everything that you use so you understand it. And that's, you know, your rights you give to Midjourney by using the service you grant Midjourney, it answers and assigned a perpetual worldwide non-exclusive sub-license, no charge royalty fee. Like you, anytime you create something free, they have access to it. Okay. That's what you're saying. That is pretty standard for a software as a service. Um, Photoshop and Illustrator, kind of similar, but different. But I'm, I'm showing you this to show you that this, your rights, you own all assets you create with this service to the extent possible under the current law. Do you notice how it says current law? Midjourney is so new. There was one case where a woman did a graphic novel comic book that was approved that was made by ai and then copyright registration office took it back and said no okay so that's like now there's a fight in court okay so when it says to the extent of personal current law laws change and evolve the privacy act was not even a thing until the internet came out and i've mentioned this before heaven forbid you guys know how why the united states created TSA, right? Transport of Security Associ is Association. So here, like your rights for Midjourney, you own all assets you create. So that's promising. Like Canva's never said that to me. Canva has said, if you use third-party elements, you cannot even go to the copyright office. You can't even say, this is my IP. You can't even click that button on KDP, okay? So understanding this, and then also like your rights, please consult your own attorney if you want more information about state. So that's what I've been doing. That's what I've been doing, okay? So this is docs.midjourney.com forward slash docs forward slash terms of service if you want to read it. They are very straightforward. It's not as confusing as Canva or other places, okay? So understanding the midjourney terms was like, okay, that brings me more peace. And I don't have to wonder like, where did this thing come from on Creative Fabrica? That was the main reason my account got suspended is because I had a coloring page in there. And when I went to go look up the sub license to give it to KDP, not only did they said it's not sufficient, but the license wasn't even there and the page was gone, which means it was uploaded illegally. Okay, so I didn't even, I, we don't even know where that content from comes from. What if someone's using Midjourney and then uploading to Creative Fabrica? Like, and you're gonna trust Creative Fabrica. You get to decide how to run your business, right? Your publishing business. I'm just throwing those ideas out there because when we hire somebody, even on Fiverr, we don't know what they're using. And like, I have a background, my undergrad is in fine art. And there are so many times that we use reference photos and we trace over them to create our own and put our own touch on it. And that's really how we need to be using mid journey in the bigger picture of things, okay? So like I sleep better at night. I need to get a picture of me sleeping, right? Not this girl, even though she looks like she is getting some serious slumber. I sleep better at night knowing I can prompt things that I can, I can copyright prompts, but then I can use prompts as digital assets, not wondering where did this person on Creative Fabrica get this? Where is this person on Fiverr actually getting their work from? Unless they're advertising like, hey, I create original work, hand illustrations, but even then, like if if it weren't true, you're liable for KDP. Like that's your agreement with KDP. So that's why the human touch is so important. And this is what's crazy. As a wedding photographer for tw 10 years, this is my first year where I haven't had a wedding like in the first six months. I've really pulled back. I've raised my prices. I'm really pursuing the past like income stream that give me time and freedom. I still have my camera. I still work for certain clients. But listen, I own the copyright when I click a button on a camera. It wasn't always like that until more cases came out and sh and it was proven like, hey, I have the authorship for this. And so this is how I'm going to use this, okay? And I'm consulting with an attorney. His name's Evan and we're trying to get him on the channel and he's just 
he's a busy dude. Okay. So that's in the works. Like the attorney is always giving me feedback. So here are the prompts. I want you just to think about this tutorial in ways that you can leverage AI. Okay. So my simple framework is just person, problem, solution, the PPS. And this really will help you move forward. So when I know who I want to create for, I need to know like who that person is, what the problem is and the solution. And you can certainly go to amazon.com and look in the books category for something. And I was thinking about my six-year-old. He loves outer space. He loves dinosaurs. So I thought, okay, he's my avatar. Let's go find out the problems that he might have, you know, as a, any six-year-old can have. And so what I did is now I need to validate it. So I went on to Amazon and I found this book and it was really interesting because I saw it in hardcover and then I looked up the BSR and the BSR was so bad. And I think that makes sense. Like a coloring book for a four to eight year old in hardcover is not a good experience for a child to try to keep a book open. Okay. But then I went to the paperback and saw that it was under a BSR of a hundred thousand. So let's look at the data. It's doing great, right? Three cells a day. If they have a bigger collection, like that really adds up. So now I know like looking for coloring books for outer space for little boys, like it's a marketplace. Okay. So if I'm looking at keywords here, like what are the keywords that I can take out of here for my AI prompt strategy? The thing sticking out to me is like astronaut, uh, surfboard, and then I have here outer space. So those are the words that I'm going to use to put into mid journey and kind of, this is what the prompt's going to look like. I'm going to forward slash imagine. And then the prompt coloring page for six year old boy, black lines an astronaut on a surfboard and outer space, white background. And I want to do two thirds because I want to do eight and a half by 11. Okay. So now like you can see clearly that the PPS method works, the people, the problem and the solution, like I'm using these as prompts. And then here's what it comes out to, right? Coloring book. I get these four choices. I kind of like the second one, the, the, um, you too. So I'm going to look at them closer. Like that's cute. Okay. I'm going to open that in my browser. I'm going to download it and I'm going to upload it into Canva because I use Canva for editing. I have permission to do that. Right. And I want to create a digital asset out of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away the background and I'm going to clean it up. Okay. And you can do that in remove background and then you can do that in a magic eraser. So do that. And I have this cute little guy. You can see, I need to clean it up a teeny bit more, but the background is blank and he's good to go. Now imagine if I created a little collection of a bunch of astronaut surfboard dudes, like that is so cute. I could use that in a collection of coloring stories. I can now use this digital asset into other AI prompts of backgrounds, different spaces, galaxies. Maybe I'm going to put him on every planet and you're going to like, like not where's Waldo, but like, where's Ralph, right? This, this astronaut. Okay. Let's say I wanted to like build out the brand more. Let's do like a little girl. This was like more fun. Look how adorable that one is. You two in the second, like I'll go in and do the same thing and pull up the background. Maybe I'll use that page once and I'll add more stars in there to make it more like I added the human touch. I did more to it. But like just the fact that I can have a little digital asset now to use, and maybe I can do this in coloring and then I can do it in children's books because my character is nailed down is really a beautiful possibility. So when we are referencing prompts, I want you to think about like, don't infringe trademark by using Mickey Mouse or Disney. Don't use anything that like, you're not gonna be able to copyright that prompt because you totally said Picasso in your prompt. This is something when we think about referencing prompts, like people create work in Procreate, the iPad app all the time, where they put a layer on top of a drawing, they change the opacity and they color on top and they claim it as theirs. Okay. So it's an iteration. So when we talk about like referencing prompts, you can literally do this, put it in your Procreate if you're artistic and then make something that's your own. Maybe yours has like less lines in it, right? Like maybe it's just more basic. Maybe it's color. Maybe you take these and then you fill it in with color. So cute. Maybe you print it out and then you color on it and then you scan that. Like people are so scared to use a modern advanced technology without even thinking about how you can continually put the human touch on it and be able to have a good piece of like a digital asset. Okay. So you can extract or subtract, sub, subtract to make it your own. Like 
the possibilities are beautiful and it's really about like just thinking about how you're going to put the human touch in it instead of being scared of the software and that's really what i want you guys to know i'm using this strategy to replace my books that were blocked i feel more i sleep better at night knowing i'm prompting assets i'm creating these cute little digital things and i'm taking it one step further the prompt is one step the digital asset I'm getting is a second step. And then I'm going step three through nine to make it this incredible little guy that's like, he has his own little brand, right? It's my little astronaut, Ralph, or whatever. So I want you guys just to think about that. And if you're so nervous, talk to an attorney. It's time. It's time for me to bring on my attorney. Please like and subscribe and let me know what questions you have about this process because it's a game changer. Love you guys. Peace out.